welcome to sharad chandra is academy where your dreams are our mission this is a special video there are two reasons to release this video the first is on the date of 24th january a special article in the hindu was released with the name of the basic doctrine this video will cover all the cases mentioned and not mentioned but related to the core concept of the basic doctrine and some other important cases the second reason is the ongoing debate between the parliament or the legislative and the judiciary relating to the appointment of judges collegium system and basic doctrine we have already covered the collegium system and three judges cases and the four judges cases of 2015 that is ncag question case now very recently the law ministry has written to the chief justice of supreme court that is dy chandrachud in order to include the government's representation in selection or appointment of judges also there has been a case of an lgbtq plus lawyer being appointed as a high court judge and the problems and issues related with so these are the reasons this video should be released in this video i shall be covering these 10 cases we'll try to keep stick to the summary and only the important parts we'll try to finish it in 20 minutes or so let's begin with the list these cases are chronologically arranged and more often than not are working on a cause and effect theory the first case is beruvari union versus unknown in 1960s then kedarnath singh versus state of bihar 1962 golaknath case keshwanand bharti case rajnarayan case adm jabalpur case or hebus corpus case menaka gandhi versus union of india case bachchan singh case minerva mills case and tma pai foundations case let us now begin with the beruvari union versus unknown case of 1960s the case dealt with the transfer of a small portion of indian territory the beruvari union this was in west bengal to pakistan in exchange for pakistan ceding a larger portion of its territory the ferozpur area to india so the transfer did indeed take place the case raised questions about the authority of the indian government to make such a transfer of territory and the supreme court ultimately ruled that the transfer was constitutional let us see the article article 3 of the indian constitution deals with the formation of new states and alteration of areas boundaries or name of existing states so indian constitution can be amended or a law can be passed with alteration of areas boundaries or names of the states that already exist coming to the next case which is kedarnath singh versus state of bihar case of 1962 the case dealt with the constitutionality of section 124a this section 124a has been in news from the uapa of the indian penal code which criminalized the offense of sedition that is rajdroho be simply going against the whole government or the own government the supreme court ultimately upheld the constitutionality of section 124 stating that it was necessary to maintain public order and the security of the state however the court also emphasized that the provision should be applied narrowly and the mere criticism of the government or its policy should not be considered sedition the court held that sedition law can be applied only in cases where the speech incites violence or has the tendency to create public disorder so these two things become important here one is incitement of violence and creation of public disorder these will come under the sedition and will be penalized the third case is golaknath versus state of punjab it is a case of 1967 the supreme court in a majority decision held that the fundamental rights guaranteed under the constitution in the third part include the right to property including right to property were protected from both legislative and executive action and that they could not be taken away or abridged by any law so they could not be 
changed or altered the court also held that the power of the parliament to amend the constitution is not absolute and cannot be used to take away or abridge the fundamental rights the case established the principle that certain provision of the constitution are not amendable cannot be amended by a simple majority in the parliament and it must require a higher majority so because of the absence of higher majority they could not be amended at that time the decision laid the foundation for the basic structure doctrine of the indian constitution which holds that certain fundamental features of the constitution are the soul of the constitution soul and spirit including fundamental rights cannot be altered or amended by the constitution after this case a 24th constitutional amendment act was passed in by the parliament in 1971 and it sought to empower the indian parliament to even amend the fundamental rights plus any provision of the constitution including the fundamental rights by two third majority in each house of the parliament so here comes the higher majority now let's come to the 25th caa constitutional amendment act it was passed in the same year in 1971 the 25th amendment act sought to abolish the right to property as a fundamental right and to empower the government to acquire private property for public use without paying compensation the amendment was passed after the indian government had begun implementation of the land reforms and nationalization of industries this land reform in the kerala led to the conflict with keshavanand bharti who was the head of nir mat we have already read about this case but we will revise here so keshavanand bharti went to court in 1973 the case dealt with the constitutional validity of the 24th and 25th constitutional amendment acts which had been passed by the indian parliament in 1971 why the 24th amendment act changed the right to property and the 24th the 25th changed the right to property and the 24th gave the constitutional power to change the fundamental rights including right to property the petitioner shri keshavanand bharti argued that these amendments would destroy the basic structure of the constitution now we have already heard about the basic structure in the golaknath case and therefore should be declared unconstitutional so the supreme court in a majority decision upheld the constitutional validity of the 24th amendment act that is the power to change or alter the constitution power to amend any provision but 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 the 25th amendment act which abolished the right to property as a fundamental right was unconstitutional the 24th is okay you can change the constitution any part of the constitution but 25th is unconstitutional and hence quest the most important outcome of this case was the court's recognition of the basic structure doctrine which holds that certain fundamental features cannot be changed or be amended by the constitution the doctrine has been used to strike down several subsequent amendments and locks such as ncaj of 2015 so the court said that okay you can change the fundamental rights but must follow the basic doctrine or anything that is not following the basic doctrine will be struck down again state of uttar pradesh versus rajnarayan of 1975 this was indira gandhi case the case dealt with the electoral malpractice and the corrupt practices committed by then prime minister indira gandhi in the 1971 general elections so rajnarayan was an electoral candidate who fought with indira gandhi from the lok sabha candidacy the petitioner had contested against indira gandhi and said that she has used government resources in her campaign and committed other electoral malpractices that is why her election or her winning is to be declared illegal the supreme court in a majority decision again held that indira gandhi had indeed committed electoral malpractice and as a result her election was declared void and she was disqualified from holding any office for a period of 6 years this case is considered a landmark judgment because it set a precedent for disqualifying electoral officials who engage in corrupt practices let us now see the next case that is adm jabalpur versus shivakant shukla the case dealt with the constitutionality of the suspension of fundamental rights during a state of emergency declared by the indian government in 1975 again in the indira gandhi rule the petitioner who were arrested during the emergency argued that their det detention was unconstitutional unconst and violative of their fundamental rights to 
फ्रीडम एंड लाइफ लिबर्टी सो आर्टिकल ट्वेंटी वन सिंपली द सुप्रीम कोर्ट इन ए मेजोरिटी डिसीजन हेल्ड दैट द गवर्नमेंट हैज पावर टू सस्पेंड फंडामेंटल राइट ड्यूरिंग ए स्टेट ऑफ इमरजेंसी एंड द डिटेंशन ऑफ द पैटिशनर पैटिशनर्स वॉज कंस्टिट्यूशनल सो सुप्रीम कोर्ट ओनली इंटरप्रेट्स द कंस्टिट्यूशन एंड गिव्स द डिसीजन बेस्ड ऑन वॉट इज द लॉ सो एज पर लॉ द सुप्रीम कोर्ट सेड दैट इज इट वॉज कंस्टिट्यूशनल ऑफ द पैटिशनर्स टू बी डिटेंड to come under detention the court also held that the judiciary could not review the validity of such detentions and the executive's decision in this regard was final that the judiciary cannot help here this judgment was considered as a setback for the protection of individual rights and civil liberties in india so this did not follow the basic doctrine which comes under the preamble also that individuality and dignity of the individual will be protected the judgment was later overruled in the case of habeas corpus writs in post emergency period by the janata party government in 1977 coming to the next case which is manaka gandhi versus union of india this case deals simply with right to travel the case dealt with the constitutionality of the procedure for the revocation of an indian passport the petitioner manaka gandhi had her passport revoked by the indian government on the grounds that she was a potential security risk she was a potential security risk she she was at a potential security risk She argued that the revocation of passport was arbitrary and violative of her fundamental rights to travel, which was protected under the Constitution of India. The Supreme Court again, in a majority decision, held that the revocation of passport was unconstitutional and violative of petitioner's fundamental right to travel. The court held that the procedure for revocation of a passport must be just, fair, and reasonable, and the revocation must be based on valid and lawful grounds. So these are the conditions which Supreme Court put. that must be based on valid and lawful grounds the court also held that the revocation must be subject to judicial review and that the individual affected by revocation must be given a hearing before the decision is made that judicial review is to be done before the decision is made this case is considered a landmark judgment because it established the principle of procedural due process that the process will take place after the procedure has been correctly done or followed and the right to fair hearing which are fundamental to the protection of individual rights under the constitution this fair hearing right is very very important this is the most important right of the criminals or somebody who has been accused of performing or doing or committing a crime the judgment also reinforced the principle of the rule of law that after only the rule of law ruf, lawfulness any process can be done and the accountability of the executive the judgment also reinforced the principle of right to travel which is a fundamental right under the indian constitution coming to the next one which is bachan singh versus state of punjab so he was sentenced to death for the murder of two people he argued that the death penalty was arbitrary and violative of the right to life which is protected under the constitution of india supreme court simply said that it was rarest of rare cases and only after taking into consideration the mitigating and aggravating circumstances the character and the criminal antecedents of the accused should given the punishment should the court give the punishment this was about the bachan case so simply supreme court upheld the constitutional validity of the death penalty for murder but laid down that this crime should be the rarest of rare kind then came the 42nd constitutional amendment act the mini constitution versus minerva mills case the amendment act aimed to change the balance of power between the judiciary executive and the legislature by giving the parliament the power to amend any provision of the constitution including the fundamental rights by a simple majority earlier it was a higher majority now it wanted to make it a simple majority this was seen as a violation of the basic structure of the constitution as it allowed the parliament to change the fundamental rights at their will these are the conflicting provisions which led to the minerva mills case the 42nd amendment act added a new clause 4 to article 31c remember this article very important which provided that laws giving effect to the directive principle of state polity dpsp contained in part 4 of the constitution which includes land reforms abolition of property etc shall not be deemed void on the grounds of inconsistency with or in derogation of any of the fundamental rights contained in part 3 of the constitution this was seen as a violation of the principle of proportionality as it allowed the government to take away the fundamental rights without any compensation uh, simply said dpsp were kept 
over the fundamental rights that in view of dpsp fundamental rights can be violated by the government so this was the point of conflict the 42nd amendment act added a new clause 5 to the article 30 368 dealing with emergency made it clear that no law made under the power of amending the constitution shall be called in question in any court or in any ground and this was seen as a violation of the principle of law and the independence of the judiciary so judicial review was taken away the 42nd amendment act also added a new clause to article 368 which made it clear that the Constitution Act 1976 shall not be called in question in any court on any ground. So first of all, we will make an amendment. What is amended cannot be judicially reviewed and this amendment itself cannot be judicially reviewed. So superpower of the parliament under the prime ministership of Indra Gandhi again and the independence of the judiciary. So Minerva Mills pushed the case against this. The case dealt with the constitutionality of the 42nd Constitutional Amendment Act. The amendment aimed to change the balance of power. We have read this already. The petitioner Minerva Mills argued that the amendment would destroy the basic structure again of the constitution and therefore should be declared unconstitutional. The Supreme Court in a majority decision held the 13 provisions of the 42nd Constitutional Amendment Act were unconstitutional as they violated the basic structure of the constitution. So this was a very correct and very apt decision. The court also held that the basic structure established in the Keshwanand Bharati case is a part of the constitution and cannot be amended by a simple majority in the parliament. So cannot amend the basic doctrine. So can basic doctrine itself be amended? No, it cannot be amended. It is a part of the constitution and cannot be amended by a simple majority in the parliament. The last case is TMA Pi Foundation and others versus state of Karnataka. This happened in 2002. The act was aimed at prevailing, preventing private education institutions from collecting capitation fee, which was seen as a form of corruption and malpractice. This is not important. The petitioner TMA Pi Foundation, a private education institution, argued that the act violated their right to administer the institution and their right to property. So the Supreme Court in a majority decision upheld the constitutional validity of the act not the TMAPI foundation, but also held that the state government cannot regulate the fee structure of unaided professional educational institute means completely private institutes. The court also held that the right to establish and administer an education institution is a fundamental right under the constitution. This is very important. A right to establish and administer an education institution. And the state cannot interfere with this right except to ensure that the institution maintains educational standards and does not discriminate against any section of society. So first, no discrimination. And second, standards of education should be guaranteed. So a state cannot interfere with the fee structure of any such institute where these two conditions are fulfilled. So this was the TMAPI foundation case. This case is considered a landmark judgment because it established the principle of positive discrimination and the autonomy of private educational institutions. The judgment also reinforced the principle of right to education, which is a fundamental right under the Indian constitution and the principle of right to establish and administer an education institution, which is also a fundamental right under the Indian constitution. So two things you remember from here, right to travel is a fundamental right and right to establish and administer an institution is also a fundamental right. So this is all about the important cases, which I hope I have covered quickly in this video. Thank you. I wish you a very good day and see you again.